Welcome to Chow Mix. Season 3 of Sonic X, aka the Metrex arc, may possibly be one of the greatest Sonic stories ever told. After the anime finished adapting both Sonic Adventure 1, 2, a bit of battle, and wrapped up its own ongoing storyline of Sonic and company returning to their own world, Season 3 would go on to continue with a brand new anime-exclusive storyline continuing off of the events from before. What transpires is the anime's greatest, completely original story, spanning across 26 entire episodes, and today, I want to talk about it. Of course, we'll specifically be going over the Japanese dub, because the general consensus is that 4Kids majorly botched the English dub. There's a ton of censorship within the 4Kids dub, and in my opinion, it's almost unwatchable due to major scenes being edited or just completely cut out. So let's revisit Sonic X's Metarex arc and see what Sonic Team was cooking back in 2004. This video is made possible by today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh offers meal kits delivering amazing food and ingredients straight to your door. This might be a surprise to a lot of people, but I'm a huge foodie. When I'm not watching other Sonic content on YouTube, I'm almost always watching cooking videos. I'm not a professional chef by any means, but I certainly dabble. So I can confidently say that one of my least favorite parts about cooking definitely has to be going out to the store to get ingredients. And one of the great things about HelloFresh is that it has all of this and more covered because they deliver quality ingredients with easy recipes straight to your door. You're able to choose from 40 weekly recipes, so no matter what kind of diet you may have, there will always be something for you to choose from. You're even able to customize meals by swapping sides or even adding a protein to a veggie dish, for example. And you'll always know ingredients are fresh because they're sent straight from the farm to your home in less than seven days. I tried out this down-home steak and potatoes recipe and I can definitely tell you, this stuff is legit. Visit HelloFresh.com and use code CHOMIC65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com with code CHOMIC65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Huge thank you to HelloFresh for making videos like this possible, and with all that being said, let's continue with today's episode. In outer space, above Sonic's home planet, a fierce battle between Super Sonic and a mysterious robotic figure takes place. Both Sonic and his opponent are greatly damaged, and things are looking a bit grim for the Hedgehog despite being in a super form. As a last-ditch effort, Sonic uses Chaos Control to scatter the emeralds across space to prevent his opponent from obtaining them for whatever evil scheme he may be plotting. But according to this mysterious figure, this action would only delay the inevitable. Immediately, he demands his troops to search across space and gather the emeralds for him but he also sends in a separate squad to retrieve something he calls a planet egg from Sonic's planet. Without the emeralds, Sonic is reverted back to his original form and begins plummeting towards his planet. Back on Sonic's planet, Amy, Cream, and Tails are watching a meteor shower when suddenly, a streak of light brighter than the rest of the meteors crash lands onto the surface. The group embarks to find the source, and they find a spaceship containing a mysterious plant species girl. We then transition into the interior of one of Eggman's facilities, where Sonic wakes up and is being treated for his battle damage. Although surprised about Eggman's unusual kindness, Sonic thanks him and darts out. Back at Cream's house, the plant girl's dreams reveal to us a merciless attack involving threatening robots and a mysterious voice telling her to run. The girl then regains consciousness and tells Tails and company that she came to this planet for Sonic's help. She's from another planet and won't reveal her name to anyone but Sonic. Abruptly, a large robot begins approaching the house. Metarex, the girl reveals. These are the violent robots that appeared in her dream. On Angel Island, Knuckles encounters one of these Metarex robots. It begins destroying the surrounding forest in search of a planet egg. Tails quickly comes in to assist Knuckles with the X-Tornado, with the plant girl in the passenger seat. Both Knuckles and Tails attempt to fight the Metarex robot, but with very little success. It's then that the girl explains that normal attacks will never work as the Metarex are extremely powerful and steal the lives of planets. The battle is looking dire for our heroes, that is, until Sonic appears in the nick of time. Back on Earth, we can see an adult Chris tinkering with an enormous machine of his own creation. This machine would allow him to warp himself to Sonic's world to visit his friends after six long years. Back on Sonic's planet, the Metarex is able to locate the planet egg of Sonic's world. The mysterious girl explains that the planet egg is the crystallization of a given planet's life force. 
If destroyed or taken, the planet will lose all life energy and eventually die. The Metarex begins making its escape with the planet egg, and the life on Sonic's planet begins to wither away. Unable to catch up, Sonic and company are forced to reconvene and figure out how to proceed. The girl approaches Sonic and introduces herself as Cosmo. Cosmo has been searching for Sonic, as he's the controller of light, aka the Chaos Emeralds, and the only one able to stop the Metarex. The Master Emerald begins glowing, and we then see a letter left behind in Chris's laboratory, expressing his apologies for suddenly leaving for Sonic's planet. And from the Master Emerald's glow, Chris emerges, but with one slight issue. He's been reverted to a child. The group greets Chris, and shortly after, Sonic collapses from his previous and current wounds. Everyone then catches Chris up on their current dilemma, and Cosmo further explains the Metarex. The Metarex are on a conquest to steal the planet eggs of each planet and take control of the universe by force. Already, many planets have fallen by the hands of the Metarex as they continue to collect planet eggs, but nobody but them knows the reason for this. The Metarex do not hesitate to use lethal force, as was the case with Cosmo's entire race. Tails reveals that only six months have passed on their planet since last seeing Chris, while on Earth it had been six years. Meaning one month on Sonic's planet is equivalent to one year on Earth. And warping to Sonic's planet caused Chris's body to essentially go back in time six years despite being 18. Going to check on Sonic, who should be in bed healing after his battle, the crew realizes that he had escaped out of an open window. Not wanting to waste any time, Sonic had begun embarking to gather the seven Chaos Emeralds. But there's still one problem. Even in his super state, he was unable to defeat his opponent he fought in space. There was no doubt that the Metarex were insanely strong, and Sonic would need to devise a new plan to take them on. Sonic returns, and Cosmo admits that her people had tried to find a way to defeat the Metarex, but despite all of their effort, were unsuccessful. Given the current circumstances, there was no choice but to venture out into outer space to retrieve the Chaos Emeralds before the Metarex. Luckily, Tails had been preparing an enormous spaceship for an emergency such as this, dubbed by him the Blue Typhoon. However, this ship needs the power of the Chaos Emeralds to function, so there was a small issue since those were now in outer space. Chris suggests using the Master Emerald, and after coaxing Knuckles a bit, they're able to get the Master Emerald and Knuckles to participate on their intergalactic journey. Back on Earth, during the six years apart from Sonic and friends, Chris was able to study and become a great scientist. With his newfound knowledge, he'd be able to assist Tails and be a much greater help than he ever was before. Preparations for departure would finish, and just as the group begins preparing for launch, another Metarex appears to thwart their plans. Using the Blue Typhoon's most powerful weapon, the Sonic Driver, they're able to fire Sonic out as a cannonball to destroy the Metarex and successfully launch themselves into orbit. Shortly after, Sonic finds a chip embedded into the fur of his head, which he then takes out. When rescued by Eggman after falling from space, he had put it on Sonic to monitor his activity. And because of that, Eggman and crew were able to keep in the loop about everything happening, and would be able to follow the crew from a safe distance in the Crimson Egg until their time to strike came. But they weren't the only ones tailing someone, as we can also see Rouge following closely behind Eggman in her own ship. Sonic and company get their first read on a Chaos Emerald via their Chaos Emerald seeking radar. They soon arrive on Planet Hido, which appeared to have its planet egg stolen and was completely submerged in water as a result. After being led to an island, Chris and Sonic are attacked by Metarex. Sonic is captured and brought to the Metarex facility, where Amy would eventually charge in and save him. Chris, distraught about not being able to save Sonic, becomes determined to not let himself be as useless as he used to be and comes up with a new invention for Sonic to use. Amy and Sonic board the X-Tornado, but get attacked once again by the Metarex. And just as Sonic falls and is about to hit water, Chris sends out his new invention, the Hover Shoes. Now being able to float above water, Sonic gains the upper hand in battle and destroys the Metarex and their captain. The crew then spots a bright, shining object in the water, the planet egg of this world. With the planet egg freed, the abundance of water drains, and the original inhabitants of the planet are able to emerge and begin living like they once did. And with the land finally being accessible, Cream and Cosmo are able to find the first Chaos Emerald. In celebration of the revival of their planet, the people of Hydo hold a festival for Sonic and company. During this festival, Eggman spies on the group from another location on the planet, plotting to steal the emerald that they had just obtained. We then see that Rouge had infiltrated the Crimson Egg, and is now blackmailing Bokun with a heart-shaped pendant of his that she found. Apparently, this pendant holds the identity of someone he admires, and rather than having Rouge reveal his secret crush, he begins working in Rouge's favor against his will. Rouge's plan is to get the emeralds for herself. 
Bokun then suggests a plan to Eggman, one given to him by Rouge, and Eggman quickly embraces it. They would trick Knuckles into thinking that they had become stranded on this planet, and needed the Chaos Emerald to power their ship. Knuckles goes to ask his friends if he can bring the Chaos Emerald to Eggman after explaining his situation to them. Obviously, Eggman was lying and they all reject his request, but being certain that Eggman was telling the truth this time, Knuckles takes the Emerald anyways and brings it to him. Sonic tries to stop Knuckles and the two get into a fight. Not attending to the Emerald due to this, Eggman attempts to steal it while they aren't looking. Luckily, Amy catches him in the act before he's able to do so, so Eggman sends a robot to take Cosmo. With both Eggman and Sonic and friends completely preoccupied, Rouge sneaks in to steal the Emerald for herself, all according to her own plan. But before she can steal it, a Metarex emerges from underground, right from under the Chaos Emerald, and eats it. Eggman's robot gets completely thrashed, so Sonic and company are forced to fight once again. Trying to steal the Planet Egg for a second time, the Metarex is distracted by Chris with a fake, and is shot with the Sonic Driver exploding into pieces. Back in space, Chris makes an upgrade to the Emerald Radar to expand its search range. Their next Emerald would be detected on Planet Breezer, which was in a constant state of blizzards and snowstorms due to its Planet Egg being taken. Upon descending, the group is attacked by more Metarex, and are forced to make an emergency landing, leaving their ship in an unflyable state. Shortly behind, Eggman follows. Using the X-Tornado, part of the group begins looking for the Chaos Emerald. Being blackmailed by Rouge once again, Bokun drugs Eggman and crew, knocking them out, so Rouge can look for the Emerald without their interference. Tails repairs the Blue Typhoon as Sonic and crew begin fighting more Metarex. Just as they're about to collide with an avalanche, the fully repaired Blue Typhoon swoops in just in time to block it. With everyone safe, they then spot an Ice Palace ahead, where the Chaos Emerald is being detected at. Chris gives Sonic a hoverboard and he makes his way towards the palace. Around the same time, Rouge also arrives nearby. After raiding the palace, they find the Chaos Emerald surrounded by ice that they can't break. A powerful ice Metarex then reveals itself, takes the Chaos Emerald, and the palace begins to crumble. The Metarex then freezes the Blue Typhoon's main cannon. By complete accident, Cosmo bumps into a button that fires an extremely hot laser, which is able to melt through the Metarex's ice armor. After completely evaporating, the Metarex drops the Chaos Emerald, but before the crew can get their hands on it, Rouge swoops in to steal it for herself. With the Planet Egg returned, the planet begins to return to its original state as all of the snow and ice melts away and new plant life begins to sprout. Back at the Crimson Egg, Rouge takes a look at the Emerald she had just stolen and realizes that there's something off about it. Tails, after analyzing the Chaos Emerald's detection records, comes to the conclusion that it was a fake created by the Metarex. Chris then adjusts the radar to filter out the fake emeralds from that point on. But this brings up a new question. Why are the Metarex creating fake Chaos Emeralds? With that and so many other unanswered questions, Sonic and friends continue their journey to discover the answers. After cruising through space for a while, the Blue Typhoon comes under attack. Two Metarex escaping from a nearby planet with a planet egg. The crew tries to stop them, but they get grabbed by the larger Metarex and it starts crushing their ship. With no choice, the Sonic Driver is used to destroy the Metarex grabbing their ship, and with it destroyed, it begins falling down towards the nearby planet it had just escaped from. But, so does Sonic after being shot out of the Sonic Driver. The other Metarex chases after its friend back down to the nearby planet. The Blue Typhoon is also forced to make a landing there to recover Sonic. Sonic coincidentally crash lands into Eggman and company who happen to have a Chaos Emerald. With them being knocked out, Sonic is able to easily take the Emerald for himself. The surviving Metarex turns out to be a complete coward, and with his companion destroyed, he resorts to laying out several traps in the case that he's attacked by any of Sonic's friends. So the group embarks to find Sonic. Amy, Cream, and Cosmo have a few run-ins with the cowardly Metarex, who traps but fails to retain the trio. They eventually get the Planet Egg back from him. Meanwhile, Sonic meets up with Tails and Knuckles. Back for his Chaos Emerald, Eggman sends in a robot to snatch it right out of Sonic's hands. The other trio groups with Sonic at the scene, but are followed by the cowardly Metarex. Eggman doesn't discriminate and attacks everyone. The Planet Egg begins to react to Cosmo and sprouts huge vines that wrap around Eggman's robots, but the roots start growing out of control. At the last second, Chris flies in and gives Sonic a pair of soap shoes to grind along the vines and punt Eggman away. The Planet Egg then calms down and retracts its vines, freeing Sonic and his friends. With the cowardly Metarex completely cornered, it's promptly destroyed by Sonic. Back on Earth, Chris's family and friends are worried about him. 
After using his machine to warp himself to Sonic's world, he locked it out so that nobody could follow him. However, Chris's grandpa was able to figure out a way to at least teleport objects to him, so they send him a huge care package that Cream's mom stumbles upon. She then sends the Chaotix Detective Agency to deliver the care package to him in space, as well as have them check up on her daughter. But just as they were about to give up as they didn't have a spaceship, Chris's grandpa teleports one last item, which coincidentally happened to be an aircraft capable of traversing space. So the Chaotix crew eventually catches up to the Blue Typhoon and attempts to board. Thinking them to be intruders, Sonic and friends comically clobber them one by one until they give up and attempt to retreat. Tails follows them in the X-Tornado to prevent them from escaping, and after grabbing them and bringing them back into the ship, they realize that it was just the Chaotix crew this entire time. They deliver Chris's packages, and just as they're about to leave, Vector has the sudden thought to capture Cream to deliver her to her mother to really impress her. Espio and Charmy go along with the plan, but Cosmo sneaks into the bag used to snatch up Cream in order to thwart their plans. Sonic shows up shortly after to tell them to give it up. Vector just wanted to impress Cream's mom, but realizes that kidnapping Cream was a mistake. So the Chaotix say their goodbyes and begin to head back home as Sonic and friends continue their journey. Back on the Crimson Egg, Rouge is snooping around and finds a pod containing Shadow the Hedgehog in a state of stasis. Shadow was thought to have died during the fight with the Bio-Lizard, where he used the last of his power using Chaos Control to teleport the Space Colony arc away from its collision course with Earth. Shadow plummeted to Earth and was never seen again. Eggman then walks in and reveals that he had rescued Shadow, but he hasn't been able to wake him up. He had also known about Rouge's presence on a ship this entire time, but would rather turn a blind eye to the fact that she was sneaking around and just consider her an honorary guest. On the Blue Typhoon, Chris begins having dreams about Shadow, flashbacks to the events that happened on the Space Colony arc. Suddenly, a Chaos Emerald is detected and Chris is awoken. Up next is Planet Hobidone, with no signs of life after its planet egg was taken long ago. The group splits up, and Sonic and a few others enter an ominous castle covered in mist. The Chaos Emeralds begin moving around, and the group realizes that the rooms have shifted. Cosmo and Chris investigate a wrecked spacecraft, discover a transmission from the original inhabitants of the planet. After having their planet egg stolen, they were forced into space, hoping that they'd one day be able to return. But the Metarax would attack their spaceship and the species would go extinct. In their final message, they request the ones who discover this message to warn anyone else about the dangers of the Metarax. The castle then begins using its illusions at full force but the group soon realizes that the walls themselves are illusions and escape the castle. A Metarex then reveals itself in the form of a giant metal wall. Chris gives Sonic another pair of power-up shoes with thrusters on the back. However, even with the help of the shoes, Sonic takes on a devastating attack that sends him plummeting down from way up high. Chris goes to catch Sonic, but gets shot down. Possibly reacting to the danger of the situation, Shadow awakens from his slumber, takes the Chaos Emerald powering his stasis pod, and uses Chaos Control to warp to the scene of the fight. He rescues Chris, destroys the Metarex in a single blow, and appears before the entire group with the Chaos Emerald from the castle, as well as the one that he had just brought with him. Everyone, surprised at Shadow's return, stares in awe and Shadow warps back to the Crimson Egg. Shortly after, Shadow collapses as he had used up all of his strength just then from not having his inhibitor rings. Cutting to another scene, we get a glimpse at a battle between an entire fleet of ships fighting against a single Metarex ship. This Metarex ship, called the Hell Ship, plows through many of these ships with little effort as they attempt to defend their base. Suddenly, the Hell Ship receives orders from what appears to be its leader, demanding it to destroy the Blue Hedgehog and the Egg-Shaped Man. At the same time, Cosmo begins having flashbacks of being attacked by the Hellship herself. Meanwhile, the crew on board the Blue Typhoon is in deep thought about Shadow. Back on the Crimson Egg, Shadow is perplexed at how the others had known his name. It turns out, Shadow received amnesia after his fall towards Earth. Suddenly, Eggman and company fall under attack, and it's by none other than the Hellship that we saw earlier. Shadow goes out to fight it, using his spin dash to bounce around and create destructive vibrations, destroying it from the inside. But because Shadow still lacks his limiter bracelets, he faints and Eggman is forced to quickly retrieve his body from space. During this battle, Rouge makes an escape in her own spaceship, right before Eggman's ship appears to completely explode after a powerful attack from the Hell Ship. Rouge then sends a video transmission to the Blue Typhoon of Eggman's ship exploding. Cosmo recognizes the Hell Ship and tells everyone that it was the one that attacked her people's ship, leading to their extinction. 
Amy insists that Cosmo will get her revenge soon. The Hellship then warps in front of the Blue Typhoon. After a failed attempt at clogging the Hellship's cannons with various items from Chris's care package, the Hellship tries to collide with the Blue Typhoon head-on. Right before colliding, Shadow appears and pushes the entire ship back. It turns out, Eggman had tricked the Hellship into thinking that they were destroyed with a clever maneuver and fake smoke. Sonic and Shadow team up and destroy the engine of the Hellship. It's here that the Hellship reveals that the actions of the Metarax are in order to maintain tranquility and silence throughout the universe, per the orders of his leader, Dark Oak. The Hellship then begins to count down to a self-destruct sequence. Using Chaos Control, Shadow stops time and freezes the ship in place for 90 seconds. During this time, Sonic is loaded and launched out of the Sonic Driver to collide with the Hellship and push it far away. Time is resumed and the Hellship self-destructs far off into the distance. But even though the Hellship was destroyed, Cosmo comments how she feels no joy from getting revenge, since the damage it caused her and her people can never be reversed. We then have another flashback with Cosmo on her people's spaceship before it was destroyed. In this flashback, Cosmo is on her way to see her mother, a giant tree embedded into a nature-filled room on the ship. She's joined by her sister, who reveals that destroying the Metarex is the only way to quote-unquote, pay for their sins. It's been a very long time since Cosmo and her people have been on their ship. In fact, nobody on the ship even remembers what their home planet was like besides Cosmo's mom. Cosmo's ship is then attacked by the Hell Ship. The blast takes out a quadrant of the ship housing the entire next generation of seeds. Panic ensues and eventually the entire ship blows up and Cosmo abruptly wakes up. The next Chaos Emerald is detected and the crew descends to the next planet to find it. Cosmo and Tails venture out and when exploring a dark cave, Cosmo accidentally activates a button that collapses the cave and causes the two to take a deep fall. After realizing Tails had injured his head during the fall, Cosmo tends to his wound, which causes Tails to blush. The rest of the crew eventually learns that Cosmo and Tails had fallen down into a cave and go out to look for them. Meanwhile, Cosmo admits to Tails that she feels like she constantly gets in everyone's way. A group of glowing insects then light up the way and lead the two to a Metarex base. The duo then enter and sneak past a Metarex before finding a room with a ton of Chaos Emeralds. While the one in the middle turns out to be real, the rest are fakes, and this facility is being used to mass produce fake emeralds. Tails then hacks into the Metarex computers, which has logs written in their own language which Cosmo is actually able to read. Cosmo translates and reveals that the Metarex are scheming something called the Galaxy Corridor Fortress Project. Tails knows they need to act quick, so he downloads the data from the computer into his watch to analyze for later. All of a sudden, the two are barged in on by a Metarex. They quickly escape and Cosmo admits how impressive Tails is, which causes him to blush once more. When looking for ways to defeat the Metarex, Cosmo and her people learned about the Chaos Emeralds and how they react to people's hearts. Cosmo, who was holding the emerald they had just escaped with, gives it to Tails, as she has too much hate and sadness in her heart because of what the Metarex did to her people. Suddenly, the two are attacked and Tails drops the emerald. They become surrounded and Tails tells Cosmo that everyone has hate and sadness in their hearts. That's why Tails relies on his friends, because they'll always be there in his time of need. Tails does his best to fight back against the Horde of Metarex, and even manages to knock the emerald out of the hand of the Metarex who stole it. Cosmo grabs the emerald, but looks up and realizes that Tails has been grabbed. Right in the nick of time, Sonic finds the two and helps fight. The trio manage to survive and make it back to the surface with the watch containing the Metarex data and the Chaos Emerald. And upon their return, the group praises Cosmo for finding the secret Metarex base, which relieves much of the self-doubt she was facing earlier. We then cut back to the Metarex leader, Dark Oak, who says that Sonic and friends are falling for the bait. His plan all along was simple. He would have them do the dirty work of grabbing the emeralds for him, and then put them in a position where he could steal them all at once. And so far, everything was going according to plan. Back on the Crimson Egg, Eggman detects two Chaos Emeralds together. So far, he has two Emeralds, while Sonic and crew have three, making these two additional Emeralds the final two of seven. Unfortunately, these two are in a Metarex Fortress with extremely heavy defenses. Debating on how to approach the situation, he sees the Blue Typhoon making an attempt to sneak into the fortress themselves. Eggman then calls Sonic and friends with a proposal to work together. The crew totally knows it's a trap, but accepts anyways since they're confident they'll thwart Eggman's plans regardless. After Chris gives Shadow back his inhibitor rings, he, Shadow, and Rouge warp into the fortress using Chaos Control. The trio run into trouble, but Shadow and Rouge distract the Metarex while Chris goes into the control room to deactivate the shields. Sonic, Knuckles, Amy, and Cosmo then start their infiltration with their three emeralds in hand. 
Sonic and Knuckles grouping up and flying with the two, and Amy and Cosmo following up behind with the other. Following behind both of them would be Eggman, who had booby-trapped the group's ships beforehand with a device that could sabotage and manipulate their controls. Eggman sabotages Amy's ship and steals her emerald, and then does the same to Sonic and Knuckles soon after. He then sends their ship plummeting down into the core of the fortress. Knuckles launches Sonic up and he manages to steal back the three emeralds. Sonic continues and meets up with Amy and Cosmo after they finally catch up at the top of the fortress where the last two emeralds are. But the Chaos Emeralds weren't the only things being housed at the top of the fortress. A strange, ultra-crystallized planet egg was being incubated near the Chaos Emeralds. Tails deduces that by using the Chaos Emeralds, the Metarex were evolving the planet eggs into highly concentrated crystals. Suddenly, a familiar figure that Sonic immediately recognizes emerges in front of an army of Metarex. This figure is, of course, Dark Oak himself. Dark Oak had collected data on all of Sonic's battles and input that data into the Metarex bug soldiers, who Sonic proceeds to battle. After finally reaching Dark Oak, Sonic strikes, but the Dark Oak in front of them turned out to be a hologram. Tails then detects an armada of Metarex ships approaching. Cosmo releases the two emeralds at the top of the fortress, which causes the planet egg being incubated to eject and fall down into the depths of the fortress. Led by one of the four Metarex bosses serving under Dark Oak, Red Pine appears with an entire fleet of ships surrounding the fortress and begins attacking. Eggman wants to retreat, so he commands Rouge and Shadow to return to the ship immediately. They use Chaos Control, intending to leave Chris behind, but he manages to jump in and warp with them back to Eggman's ship. Chris, who explains that while he may be weak and small, has matured and can now stand on his own two feet. He then throws a flash grenade and steals the two emerald in Eggman's possession. During his escape, he manages to find a ship and escapes with the emerald and makes his way back into the fortress to save Sonic. Shadow pursues Chris and eventually strikes his ship down. Chris runs away and is picked up by Rouge, who asks if she can have the emeralds when he's done with them. Not being able to promise her anything, Rouge drops Chris down into the depths of the fortress, where Knuckles has been hanging out on the X-Tornado since Eggman sabotaged their ship earlier. Knuckles is able to grab Chris and they begin to pilot the X-Tornado to go get Sonic. Eggman notices a distortion in space leading to another dimension, caused by an insanely strong gravitational anomaly at the center of the fortress where the planet egg had dropped down to. Chris and Knuckles reach Sonic and throw him the two remaining Chaos Emeralds, where all seven now sit in the same place. The entire fortress begins to glow with a blinding light, and the gathered emeralds cause Sonic and Shadow to transform into their super states. The two begin fighting for the Chaos Emeralds. While this is going on, the gravitational pull from the crystallized planet egg then begins to suck everything inwards, including the armada of the Metarex ships. Red Pine's ship is pulled in and explodes, killing him instantly. The Crimson Egg follows behind, and right before the ship is about to enter the center of gravity, Shadow jumps on board and uses Chaos Control to warp them to safety. The seven Chaos Emeralds get sucked in, and Sonic holds on for dear life as the Blue Typhoon finally comes in to grab him. Using the power of the Master Emerald, they fly away at full speed, escaping the powerful gravitational pull. Dark Oak, watching things transpire from far away, is shocked to learn that there are now two beings who can control the power of the Chaos Emeralds. Not only Sonic, but also Shadow. Sonic and friends, after barely escaping such an intense battle, are faced with doing some large repairs to the Blue Typhoon. Meanwhile, the three remaining Metarex bosses, Pale Bayleaf, Yellow Zalkova, and Black Narcissus, discuss how to go about taking out the Blue Hedgehog, and by whose hands. A ship then approaches the Blue Typhoon. It's none other than the Chaotix crew, who got lost in space on their way home and need Tails to repair their ship. They stay aboard the Blue Typhoon while Tails fixes their ship and notice how close he and Cosmo are. Vector takes it upon himself to help the two fall in love, since he can feel the romantic tension in the air just by watching them. After many failed attempts at forcing the two into awkward situations meant to help their love blossom, the two end up falling for each other anyways during some mishaps when preparing a surprise thank you party for the rest of the crew. Meanwhile, back on the Crimson Egg, Rouge is concerned about Shadow, who's now back in his pod and not waking up. It was thanks to his limiters that allowed him to conserve enough energy to save everyone from the gravitational pull back at the Metarex Fortress. Cosmo and Tails finish setting up the surprise thank you party, but Knuckles, enraged by Vector's antics involving drawing on his face, goes berserk and destroys the party. The rest of the crew walks in on the destroyed room, but they celebrate anyway since it was the thought that really counted. Tails and Cosmo stargaze, and Tails accidentally slips up and calls Cosmo beautiful. Thinking he was referring to the stars, she agrees, saving Tails the embarrassment of being so upfront about his feelings with her. After Knuckles makes the finishing touches on the Master Emerald Shrine, the Blue Typhoon is good to be used again. Analyzing the gravity whirlpool from the fortress, Tails can now understand that it is what is known as a Galaxy Corridor, which leads straight to the Metarex universe. 
but because of the strong gravitational pull, any spacecraft without strong defensive shields would be crushed instantly, which was the case with the Metarex boss Red Pine. So they activate their shields and head in. Space and time start to bend around them, and everyone passes out. When they come to, they wake up in the galaxy corridor. The Blue Typhoon's engines malfunction due to the large roots from the galaxy corridor wrapping around it. So the group goes off to clean it, and Sonic is given some new power-up shoes from Chris that allow him to cut off the roots easily with the saw on the bottom of his shoes. But besides these roots, there are also huge rocks blocking the path that not even Knuckles can break, so for now, the Blue Typhoon is helplessly stuck. It's at this moment where Dark Oak sends the second Metarex boss, Yellow Zelkova, to attack. This hulking opponent happens to inadvertently break many of the rocks in their way on his way to attack them. Sonic and Knuckles go into fight, and after struggling with dealing any damage, they come up with a plan to have Yellow Zolkova ram into the Blue Typhoon to face it in the direction they need to escape from, and shoot the Sonic driver at Yellow Zolkova, pushing him back and crushing the remaining rocks blocking their path. Yellow Zelkova, now buried in a rock, is unable to stop the group from powering on the Blue Typhoon and making their escape through the galaxy corridor. Out the other end, Sonic and friends are now in hot water as they're in the Metarex universe. And not long after, a Metarex spaceship is detected, but mysteriously flees. They're obviously up to something, so Sonic suggests that they go off course to throw them off. Immediately after altering their course, several Metarex ships attack. The Blue Typhoon engages them in combat, but the ships flee once again. We then see the third Metarex boss, Black Narcissus, excited to finally encounter Sonic and company as he hasn't had a good fight in a long time. The crew then gets a read for an emerald on their radar on a planet with a bunch of abnormal craters. It can only be concluded that these craters were caused from explosions due to Metarex attacks that wiped out the inhabitants of the planet. Fired up about this fact, the group agrees that they should destroy the Metarex base on that planet. It's here that the group realizes that it's not just a single emerald that they're getting a read on, but 500. Again, the Metarex are using the crystallized planet eggs to create fake emeralds. Approaching the planet, the Blue Typhoon receives a text transmission from the planet, from none other than Black Narcissus. Cosmo translates, and reads that Black Narcissus has formally invited them into the planet, but Cosmo suddenly stops herself. There was another part to that letter, but Cosmo keeps it to herself. While the rest of the group discuss their strategy, Cosmo sneaks out and leaves for the planet in Amy's ship by herself. Sonic realizes Cosmo disappeared, and Chris is also strangely missing. The Metarex base then fires a bunch of missiles at the Blue Typhoon, but these missiles end up being blinding fireworks and are obviously being used to distract the crew from something. Cosmo arrives in front of Black Narcissus, who reveals that he wrote at the end of his letter for Cosmo to come alone. Eventually, Tails is able to translate the letter for himself, and realizes that Black Narcissus had promised Cosmo that he would tell her everything that happened to her tribe on the condition that she came alone. But instead of revealing anything to Cosmo, he attempts to take her hostage right before Chris shows up and saves her. Using another flashbang, Chris and Cosmo escape, and thwart some of the traps laid out on their way out. Out of nowhere, Black Narcissus sneaks up behind Chris and strikes him violently on the head, knocking him out. Back on the Blue Typhoon, Sonic is shot out through the Sonic Driver and smashes into the Metarex base to save Cosmo and Chris. Black Narcissus reveals that he had harmed and captured his two friends, and in a blind rage, Sonic begins transforming into a darker version of himself. He instantly destroys the two powerful Metarex opponents Black Narcissus sends out on him. And before he tears Black Narcissus himself to shreds, Eggman pops in and scolds the Hedgehog for losing his temper. Sonic calms down, and Eggman and crew show the Metarex boss that they aren't pushovers either as they proceed to absolutely wreck his sh Chris and Cosmo get rescued by Shadow, and Rouge takes care of destroying the Emerald Manufacturing Facility at the base. With the base destroyed, the two groups return to their respective ships and part ways. Eventually, Eggman detects a Chaos Emerald, and soon after, they happen across a fight between a human resistance force battling against a fleet of Metarex ships led by the fourth Metarex boss, Pale Bailey. Shadow goes out to help and ends up saving a red-headed girl. The Metarex retreat, and Eggman and company wind up going back to the planet of the Resistance, which is dying due to their planet egg being stolen by the Metarex long ago. The girl, named Molly, who dreams of restoring her planet, is impressed with Shadow's heroic actions. She calls him the Black Wind, a legendary hero from her people's fairy tales, but Shadow doesn't seem interested in the flattery. The rest of the Resistance tries roping an Eggman and crew to help them, but they refuse. They explain that they're after the Chaos Emerald, and Leon, a member of the Resistance, mentions a meteor impact containing a bright white gem that they had since stored at the Mineral Mine. Molly volunteers to take Shadow and Rouge to the mine, but before she leaves, Leon gives her a key to open a vault at the mines that contains a disc, and asks her to bring it back to him. 
Eggman realizes that there's something fishy about this request, but trusts that Shadow and Rouge are capable of handling whatever's about to happen by themselves. On their way to the mines, Molly explains how she wants to protect her planet until the very end, and refuses to abandon it, if only she had powers like Shadow to make her dreams a reality. The trio arrive at the mine and grab the Chaos Emerald. On their way out, Molly opens the locker to get the disc for Leon, but upon opening it, the group realizes that the locker was rigged with a bomb. At the last second, Shadow uses Chaos Control to warp the group outside the mine safely as they see the facility explode in the distance. Leon had tried to kill them. Now knowing that Leon was working with a Metarex, Molly charges back to confront him. Back at the Resistance base, Leon is seen talking with Pale Bailey via video transmission. The deal was, if the Resistance surrendered as well as turn in or kill Eggman and crew, Pale Bayleaf would let them escape with their lives. Eggman barges in on this transmission and attempts to escape using his giant robot E3000. Since the Resistance were unsuccessful at turning in Eggman and crew, Pale Bayleaf goes in to fight them instead and calls off the deal. Molly flies in and pleads with her fellow Resistance members to keep fighting. But the Resistance members are exhausted from the never-ending war and just wanted to stop. Shadow warps on top of Molly's ship and tells her to retreat because she needs to survive for her dream to live on. Molly refuses to listen and charges in headfirst, attacking Pale Bayleaf's ship. Pale Bayleaf charges a powerful laser, and Molly locks tear-filled eyes with Shadow before her ship is shot at and explodes. Molly's sacrifice causes Shadow to remove his inhibitor rings and fight back against the Metarex Armada. They retreat, and after the battle, Rouge and Shadow go to bury Molly. Shadow realizes that Molly wasn't someone who clung to the past like he did, but looked forward to the future. Back on the Blue Typhoon, Sonic and friends watch their Emerald Radar for any reads. But because of the gravitational anomalies, there's just too much static to effectively search. Despite this, they eventually get a read from the inside of a meteor. This meteor turns out to be a ship piloted by a race known as the Marmalims. They had been on a quest to find a person that their planet's fortune teller had foretold would be able to save their planet by getting back their planet egg. But on their quest, their ship broke down. They're brought on board the Blue Typhoon and promise to give them the emerald that they found on the condition that they help them return to their planet. The crew agrees to help them back to their planet, and upon arrival, after receiving the Chaos Emerald, they realize that the inhabitants are extremely easygoing despite living on a dying planet. Cosmo begins to question her own happiness, and wishes she could be strong like them since they're faced with similar circumstances after all. The group gets their fortunes read, buys various lucky charms, and Amy even learns a love spell. Tails reports back and reveals that after analyzing the planet, he discovered that it had begun to develop something similar to a cancer cell at its core. So they shoot Sonic out via the Sonic Driver to dig down into the core and blow up the cancer cell, releasing water back onto the surface and curing the planet. Afterwards, Amy realizes that Tails and Cosmo walked into her love spell she had set for Sonic, and the two hold hands and watch the moon together. Back on the Blue Typhoon, Sonic and crew detect a moving Chaos Emerald. This Chaos Emerald being in a ship chased by the Metarax. Trying to help, Chris and Sonic fly out to assist before the ship warps away. Soon after, a Chaos Emerald is detected once again. It ends up leading them through a frightening storm vortex with lightning capable of destroying their ship in a single strike. They proceed and eventually find the ship with the Chaos Emerald once again. After capturing it, the pilot is revealed to be Deco from Eggman's crew, who had set them up for an ambush. Not only Eggman's ship, but a fleet of Metarex ships surround them. Eggman had joined forces with the Metarex, and the Blue Typhoon was completely pinned. Using the Sonic Driver, Sonic is shot out to deal damage to the giant Metarex ship, but gets caught in an electric force field, severely damaging Sonic and also causing the Master Emerald trying to short circuit. With both Sonic and Knuckles in critical condition, Tails struggles to come up with a solution and runs away. Cosmo then talks him up, saying how incredible Tails is when he believes in himself. Eggman then sends a video transmission, tipping off Sonic and friends that the force field will go down in 5 minutes and the Metarex will fire a barrage of missiles, destroying the Blue Typhoon. With his newfound confidence, Tails devises a way to escape by reversing the flow of the shield to create a powerful blast. The only issue is that they would need Sonic. And right on cue, Sonic shows up, still damaged but up to the task. Using Sonic, he and his friends manage to create an explosion and focus their shields to fly past the Metarex while they fend for themselves. On the Metarex mothership, Eggman is formally announced as the new fourth Metarex boss. Dark Oak then reveals where Sonic and crew are currently hiding. Currently, they're situated in an area repairing their ship from the previous encounter, so they'll be using that as an opportunity to attack. The Chaotix, now working at a cafe called Chaotix Cafe, are revealed to have gone into the gravitational pull from earlier looking for a shortcut and teleported to the Metarex universe. 
Now they're stranded and in need of cash to repair their ship, so they open a new business. Eggman shows up and tries putting up some wanted posters of Sonic and friends. After being shooed off, the Chaotix invite the group over to warn them and house them as they repair their ship. Vector goes out to buy parts for them, since they would be immediately recognized from the wanted posters. However, a Metarex soldier spots Vector and suspects him to be helping the fugitives in their escape. So Pale Bailey plans an ambush for when they leave the planet. Right as Sonic and his friends are about to finish repairs on their ship, Eggman shows up at the cafe once more. Vector is forced to go back and tend to him, and Eggman lets slip that the Metarex are planning an ambush from behind the moon for when the Blue Typhoon leaves. Eggman takes his leave, and we then see the Blue Typhoon launch into outer space. As expected, the Metarex begin their ambush and shoot down the ship as it explodes and crash lands on the moon. Thinking they had successfully put an end to Sonic and his friends, Pale Bailey retreats, but it's revealed that Eggman had disguised his ship with a thick armor resembling the Blue Typhoon in order to take the hit himself and let Sonic and his friends escape. The real Blue Typhoon takes off without any sort of ambush, leaving the crew extremely confused as they were expecting to be attacked. Both Vector and Sonic realize what Eggman had done for them, and are extremely thankful for his sacrifice. On another planet, Shadow and Rouge end up at a bar after parting ways with Eggman upon joining the Metarax. After taking a brief rest, they eventually find themselves exploring a vast forest, with no signs of animal life and a shining gem in the sky. Meanwhile, Sonic and friends get attacked by more Metarax. Their ship is then lifted up by Yellow Zelkova, who had freed himself and is now looking for revenge from their earlier encounter. He throws the Blue Typhoon and launches it down to the surface of a nearby planet. Following them down, Yellow Zelkova reveals that he's using an upgraded version of Eggman's electric force field from earlier, and proceeds to gain the upper hand in battle against Sonic and Knuckles. Using some quick thinking, the group figures out a way to reverse the current of the electric force field to shock Yellow Zelkova. The shock causes his armor to explode, and his true form is revealed, a living organism resembling someone from Cosmo's Rays. Yellow Zelkova continues to fight, but gets pushed back by Knuckles and trips over the edge down a steep hill, leading to lava. Knuckles tries saving him, but Yellow Zelkova accepts his demise and lets the lava take him. We then see Eggman downloading Metarex data through a USB back at the Metarex base. He's then barged in on by Pale Bayleaf, who announces that Yellow Zelkova has perished. Back at the forest, Shadow and Rouge learn that the shiny object in the sky is a fake Chaos Emerald, mysteriously floating above the forest. The two then discover the members of the Resistance embedded into the roots of the trees. Leon tells Shadow to reach into his pocket, and he pulls out a USB, apparently containing the truth about the Metarex. The crew is back at the Blue Typhoon, wrapping up for the day as Tails stays behind to get some more work done. We then see Shadow sneaking around the Blue Typhoon as he enters Cosmo's sleeping quarters. The Blue Typhoon's intruder alarm goes off, and Cosmo wakes up to Shadow about to go in for a killing strike. Sonic shows up to interject, and the two fight. Shadow incapacitates Sonic and begins chasing after Cosmo, who had run off with Tails. After a long game of cat and mouse, Tails finally manages to trap Shadow in the Sonic Driver, and he gets shot out into outer space as a bullet, buying a bit of time for the group. Rouge meets with Knuckles and gives him the USB that Leon had given to him. This USB would explain why Shadow is doing what he's doing. Shadow pulls off a Chaos Control to warp back onto the Blue Typhoon, but realizes that the emerald he had gotten from the mines was a fake despite everything. Suddenly, the Blue Typhoon is shot at, and the explosion breaks a hole in the front window. Something quickly swoops in and steals the emerald in their possession. With everything being sucked out of the window, a safety mechanism finally engages and closes the hole. Dark Oak in the nearby ship that had just shot them makes his presence known, and congratulates Cosmo on accomplishing her mission after referring to her as White Seed. Cosmo begins to have a flashback. During the attack on her ship, she was the only one spared by Dark Oak, and she took his hand in order to survive. Cosmo's gem on her chest starts glowing, and the light engulfs the entire ship, warping them away. The crew soon realizes that they've been teleported onto the surface of a planet surrounded by dead trees. After analyzing Cosmo, the truth is revealed. The Metarex had planted a tracking device in Cosmo's brain, allowing them to see and hear everything she does. Unfortunately, surgically removing the device would kill Cosmo, so their only hope is to defeat Dark Oak. It's soon discovered that Sonic and friends are currently situated on Planet Greengate, the original home of Cosmo and her people. Amy and Rouge stumble upon a pre-recorded transmission from another plant girl named Earthia. In this transmission, we learn the truth about Cosmo's people. Cosmo's people had been fighting a long war against an unspecified animal race. The males of Cosmo's race had the ability to take on the form of large and powerful beings called Movas, but taking this form would come at the ultimate sacrifice, death. The war was so bad that many children had to resort to using this form to protect their loved ones. 
Cosmos Rays had to make a difficult decision. Either give up the battle and abandon their home planet, or continue fighting a losing battle. Earthia, Cosmos' mother, had decided that they would retreat and attempt survival aboard their spaceship. But her husband Lukes disagreed, and wanted to stay put to continue the fight for their planet. He eventually would discover that by using the power of their world's planet egg, his people could stay transformed without dying. However, doing this would slowly kill their planet in the process. So they would also need to retrieve the planet eggs of the surrounding planets. Earthia discovered this, and the two each considered each other a traitor. Earthia for abandoning her planet, and Lukes for killing his own planet in exchange for power. So Earthia would take the remaining females of their race into space, while the males stayed back to fight their losing battle. With the remaining women of their race, Earthia would begin their departure. And fearing the potential capabilities of her power-hungry husband, before leaving, she would unleash a nuclear strike to kill off the remaining members of the planet. Afterwards, Earthia would fuse with the ship's navigational system by becoming the giant tree that we saw in Cosmos flashbacks and lead her people to a new peaceful planet. Miraculously, Lukes, along with four other male members of Cosmos' race, managed to survive, and they would go on to build themselves cybernetic bodies and become Dark Oak and the four Metarax bosses. Chris then analyzes the contents of the USB, and it's revealed that the fake emeralds had been used to create forests with no creatures all over the galaxy. The Metarex would do this until the entire universe was covered in trees and no animals remained, in order to create a quiet and tranquil universe. Cosmo, distraught about the fact that she had been and continues to inadvertently leak information to Dark Oak, attempts to go off on her own to defeat the Metarex leader. Tails stops her, and he and the rest of the group assure Cosmo that they'll put a stop to Dark Oak no matter what, to save the universe and their friend. Suddenly, Bokun appears in front of the group, pleading with them to save Eggman, as he was locked up after the Metarex found out he was stealing information information from them the entire time. Meanwhile, Pale Bayleaf reports to Dark Oak, informing him that the preparations for the forestation project have been completed, just in time for Dark Oak to have collected all seven Chaos Emeralds. Bokun brings out a pre-recorded transmission of Eggman, where he admits that he was only there to obtain the Metarex's secret information. He had learned that the Metarex plans to commence the final stage of their plan at the universe's coordinates 0000000. 000 000 000 where a special event that only occurs once every thousand years will take place. So the group urgently takes off to confront the Metarex's mothership. All except Shadow, who doesn't trust Cosmo. In a one-on-one -on -one moment, Tails asks Cosmo if she'd like to live on his planet when this is all over, and she happily agrees. The Blue Typhoon eventually arrives in front of the Metarex mothership. With that, both Pale Bayleaf and Black Narcissus go out to fight Sonic and friends. Soon, the Chaotix crew shows up in their ship, and they picked up Shadow along the way. They crash straight into the mothership and begin their search for Dark Oak. Meanwhile, Chris reaches Eggman, and right before freeing him, Eggman frees himself, showing that he could have escaped any time he wanted. Suddenly, a large distortion reveals a blue planet along with a planet egg. This planet, Planet Aquarius, located at galaxy coordinates 000000, appears once every thousand years. At this exact location and time, a galaxy corridor intersects, connecting all of space to this one point, meaning that anything that happens at this point can instantly spread throughout all of space. The Metarex's plan was to initiate the forestation project on planet Aquarius, to instantly spread it throughout the rest of the universe and cover everything in forest. It's here where Pale Bayleaf, Black Narcissus, and Dark Oak use the Chaos Emeralds and merge together to transform into a three-headed dragon called Final Mova, and they fuse themselves with planet Aquarius as Sonic and friends try to fight them. Sonic gets swallowed and begins plummeting down planet Aquarius. Officially teaming up, the Crimson Egg docks itself to the Blue Typhoon to combine their power. After some thought, Knuckles comes up with the idea to use the Master Emerald to suppress the powers of the Chaos Emeralds. Doing so would surely break the Master Emerald, but Knuckles eventually decides that it needs to be done. So by using the Blue Typhoon, the Crimson Egg, and all of the power of the Master Emerald, the Sonic Driver fires a powerful beam of energy, destroying two of the three heads of Final Mova, causing the Master Emerald to shatter and rendering the Chaos Emeralds inert. Amy flies out to rescue Sonic from Planet Aquarius, but her ship crashes and she falls into the water with him. Suddenly, a ball of light envelops both of them, healing their wounds and leading them back to the Blue Typhoon. Their planet's Planet Egg had responded to their hearts. Final Mova begins to rapidly regain his strength, and completely fuses with Planet Aquarius. Its hate and sadness would be used to draw out the remaining power of the Chaos Emeralds. As this is happening, Cosmo's red gem on her chest begins to glow, and we can see that Planet Aquarius becomes encapsulated by a hard outer shell. Cosmo begins another flashback, from when she was an infant. With each generation of seeds, less and less would survive the growth process. 
Out of Cosmo's entire generation, she was the only one to survive this process. And Earthia admits that Cosmo will be her final child, the last hope of saving the universe. Back in reality, Planet Aquarius begins pulsing and emitting a purple energy wave that drains creatures of their life energy. Cosmo, being a plant-based life form, naturally is unaffected by this. Cosmo takes the inert emeralds to Eggman, who would offer to revitalize them with the remaining energy of his ship. Final Nova states how animals and plants cannot coexist, but Cosmo disagrees, because she knows they can since she made such good friends with them and even fell in love with one. During her trek to Eggman's ship, she's attacked by vines and drops the Chaos Emeralds. When all hope seems lost, the shell on planet Aquarius cracks, and it ceases its life-draining waves. From the crack emerges a bright light, which returns the Chaos Emeralds fully restored to Cosmo. The Planet Eggs have once again responded to the hearts of Sonic and friends. With the Emeralds restored, Sonic and Shadow transform into their superforms and go to put a stop to Final Mova. Rapidly tearing in and out of the shell of Planet Aquarius, they cause a large explosion from the inside. Tills detects a rapid spike in energy, and that Final Mova is attempting to compress all the Planet Eggs at Planet Aquarius's core to cause an immense, galaxy-ending explosion as a last-ditch effort. The only option left is to use the Sonic Driver one last time and hope for the best. Suddenly, Cosmo's gem begins glowing again, and she can hear the voice of her mother Earthia telling her that her moment to save the universe has come. Cosmo's gem shatters, and she transforms into an adult. She flies towards Planet Aquarius, and turns into a giant cherry blossom tree, fusing with the planet with her roots entangled throughout. Planet Aquarius, along with Final Mova, have been restrained, and she asks the crew to perform the lethal strike with the Sonic Driver. Doing so would certainly kill her along with Final Mova, but trying to separate her from the planet would cause a universe-ending explosion. Either way, Cosmo would have to die. Tails, still processing the situation, asks to be alone. He hesitantly repairs the Sonic Driver, which gets loaded with both Super Sonic and Super Shadow. When the time comes to pull the trigger, Tails finds that he just can't do it and breaks down in tears. How could he kill Cosmo after everything they've done together? After all, she promised him that she'd live on his planet after everything was over. Eggman tries reasoning with Tails, telling him that he can't let Cosmo's sacrifice go to waste. But despite everything, Tails can't bring himself to pull the trigger. Cosmo begins speaking to Tails, and thanks him for all the wonderful times they had together. She pleads for Tails to shoot her so that he can continue living. Tails, utterly heartbroken, puts his weapon down as he remembers all the moments he and Cosmo shared together. Finally, he confesses his love for Cosmo, and pulls the trigger. A golden beam of energy shoots out towards planet Aquarius, so powerful that the cannon itself crumbles into pieces. The beam impacts the planet, and explodes into a glowing light. And in a dreamlike sequence, Cosmo and Tails meet one last time. Here, Cosmo also confesses her love to Tails, and she says that she'll never forget him. Lukes, in a similar dreamlike scene, sees Earthia's hand and goes with her, implying that the two meet once again and settle their differences in the afterlife. Planet Aquarius begins violently shaking, about to explode. Sonic, who is about to sacrifice himself by using Chaos Control to warp him and the planet to explode far away, gets knocked out by Shadow. Shadow says that he needs to be the one to do this since Sonic's Chaos Control is so weak. Shadow warps with the dying planet Aquarius far away, where we can then see an explosion in the distance. Tails meets up with Sonic, who hands him a seed, saying that it was all that was left. Tails breaks down crying into his arm in frustration. Still in denial about the turn of events, he blames Sonic for not being able to save Cosmo. Sonic silently stands there, head down, simply being there for his friend to get his feelings out. Some time has passed, and everyone is back on Sonic's planet. Knuckles explains to Chris that the Master Emerald will restore when it regains all of its lost energy. Chris, temporarily stranded on Sonic's planet, asks how long that could take, with Knuckles having no idea. Chris takes his leave, and on his way back to Cream's house, he's approached by Bokun, who tells him that Eggman has something waiting for him. A one-way teleportation machine to bring him back to Earth. But because of the timing, the current alignment of the planets would only allow this to happen within the next three minutes. Because of this, Chris wouldn't have time to say goodbye to any of his friends. But it's okay because he knows he'll be back to see his friends again one day. Chris takes off in the teleporter, which has him soaring across the sky. And running next to him down below is Sonic, who locks eyes with him. Without even having to say anything, the two understand what the other is thinking. The time for Chris to return home has come, and the machine blasts off and disappears, leaving behind just the beautiful scenery of an open sky. Normal routine begins once again. One by one, we see each character going off to put a stop to Eggman's usual schemes. Rouge finally reveals what's inside Bokun's locket, and it's a picture of his secret crush, Cream the Rabbit. 
And finally, in Tales of Shop, we can see a potted plant with small leaves sprouting out. Cosmo lives on. The Metarex arc is one of my favorite Sonic stories of all time, and I know it's one that only a small percentage of fans have delved into. Hashtag save Cosmo, and with that, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content similar to this. Huge thank you to all of my amazing channel members. Yeah, all these guys right here. If you'd also like to be featured on this list, press the join button beneath this video or the channel membership link in the description for more details. And with all that being said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.